Hey guys, it's Sarah. Today I'm going to be doing like a personal video, so it's going to be kind of like a story time video. Um, if you already saw the title, it's going to be Why I Stopped Dancing. And so this is kind of a really long story, so I'm going to try and like shorten it up as much as I can to fit it into a YouTube video. But I want to tell you guys the reason why I stopped dancing because I want to make it aware that like dancing is very beautiful and all, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that are very tough to get through. And it's really, really tough to keep staying as a dancer because the dance world is really tough. And sometimes it's better to just let it go than keep pushing yourself until you make yourself sick. That is the reason why I'm gonna be doing a Why I Stopped Dancing video, just to get the message out there. So here we go. Okay, so I've been a dancer since, or I was a dancer, since I was five years old. I started at a studio that was local to where I live, and everything was okay. I was like really shy, really shy when I first started. Um, I would literally walk into class and the ballet bars, I would like hang around the ballet bars until class started. Like it was really awkward. I remember myself doing it. I would walk into the room, the studio, and I would literally stand against the bars and watch everybody else talk and like have conversations and like have fun and like mess around and stuff just like what little kids do and I would kind of be like off to the side like by the bar and everything just keeping to myself I was pretty shy like basically my whole dance career basically but it started at a very young age so the studio that I went to was really crappy. Um, I didn't know this until I transferred to a different studio a couple years ago, but it was really bad. So, the studio that I went to, it's like in a shopping mall, and it's not even like, like the floors aren't even like dance floors, they're like hardwood floors, and so I was I didn't know that it was that bad until I moved to a different studio because that's all I knew for like 12 years of my life. So that dance studio, um, through like kin no not kindergarten. I started when I was in first grade. So first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Those were all fine years. Like those years, like fine saying as in I didn't have any problems. So those years were fine, and then once I got to high school, it started going downhill. So I joined this thing they had called like this performance team thing, and so I was on the performance team with my sister and some of my friends, and the thing with the performance team is it wasn't a competition team. The competition, if you wanted to be on the competition team, you had to be a millionaire basically, um, they had auditions for that, but basically if you had the money, you made it. No one ever got cut from the company, so it really wasn't even a company. It was like if you had the money, he made it. I was never on the company I wanted to be just because I wanted to do competitions. And plus, another reason why I'm making this video is because the company kids got treated differently than anybody else that wasn't on the company. So, anyways, getting back to the performance team. The performance team was like great and all but like no one showed up for the performances and no one went to the performances I remember one time me and my sister we were supposed to perform at the dance studio because they were having like an open house and so we went me and my sister my mom drove us to the dance studio we were all dressed up we had our makeup on and everything we were all ready to go and me and my sister were the only two people from the performance team to show up the company was there because the company mattered and everything but me and my sister were the only two people from the performance team, the entire performance team, to show up. I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, seriously, we're paying all this money and, like, no one's gonna show up to do the dances? And, like, it just felt like we didn't matter. Like, it was like, oh, well, the company's here, so it's like, we don't need to be here. So, that was, like, a turning point after that. Um... So, the performance team. The performance team, we performed at really, really bad places. Not bad as in, like, vi like bad, but bad as in, like, places that are not approved, like, for dancing. We have performed on a blacktop that was uneven, and, like, the only people that were watching us were our parents, because, like, no one went there. Like, 
who would watch us? So, like, I remember all the performances we did were just, like, not good. And we only had, like, three or four throughout the whole year because they would get canceled and no one would ever find something else. It was actually the parents' job to find jobs for us to go perform at. So it was, like, really ridiculous because I felt like it was, like, just another way to get money taken because, I mean, we didn't even get costumes. Like, when I was on the performance team, we got a shirt. And, like, I mean, we're the performance team, so we should be performing like professionals. Not just, like, this separate group who's, like, always less than the company because that's what it seems like. So, the performance scene was, like, really, the choreography was, like, not even, I'm not even going to talk about that because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but really wasn't up to par with, like, any of the levels that we were dancing on, so it was, like, really bad. So, moving on to another reason why I stopped was because, first of all, I had two knee surgeries, so I can't say too much about that with like the reason like for that dance studio's fault they did try to accommodate me for everything that I tried to do which was like I appreciate and all I did try to take contemporary and the one of the directors told me that I couldn't because she had to ask the choreographer if I would be allowed to take the class I mean honestly who does that who has to ask someone permission for someone to take a certain class? If this is a dance studio, you should be allowed to take whatever kind of class you want to further your dance education. I was never allowed to take contemporary because the teacher didn't want me in this class. She told me to go take class with 12 year olds. And like, I was like 18 at the time. I'm not taking a class with 12 year olds. Like, I've been at your studio for since I was five years old and you're telling me to go take a level one class with 12 year olds because you can't accommodate me in a class because the choreographer only wants company kids. I mean, I think that's just a little rude. Then moving on away from that dance studio, um, I just had a lot of trouble at a new dance studio I went to. The dance studio, the newer one that I went to, was absolutely fabulous. I loved it. Um, I'm actually going back there soon to take a free class. Um, there was nothing wrong with the dance studio itself. Everything was perfectly fine. Like, all the people there, everything was, like, amazing. And, like, I wish I could still take classes there, but I just can't afford it. But, um, one of the teachers there that they had, um, kind of knocked me down so far that I just felt like I wasn't good enough anymore. I just felt like everything I did was not good enough. I started having body image issues, which I still have to this day and I'm struggling with. I started to not like the way I looked in a leotard. I started to not want to go. I had really bad anxiety before every class. I just couldn't wait for the class to be over. I just kept like looking at the clock, like thinking, like, can this just be the end of the class? I never wanted to go across the floor because I was always really bad at going across the floor and everybody else was just like, stellar at it because they had real dance training since they were young because that studio actually was a professional studio so everybody there was already like professional and I was here coming from this other studio that I never got trained in ballet or anything like that properly so I was kind of like I had to catch up and it was really really difficult so I remember sometimes, like, some classes, he would just yell at me, and it was just, it beat me down really far. Like, I know that you have to, like, tough it out, and, like, a lot of people say that, like, the only way you're gonna get better is if you deal with strictness, and, like, you have to be tough about it, but I don't think, I think there's a difference between being tough and being rude, and, like, that can affect someone really, really bad. So it was just like really difficult to be in that position of me coming from an old dance studio where I got no dance training and being put in a professional situation that I put myself in. I'm not like blaming like anybody. I put my own self there. It was just really difficult to be in that position because everybody else already knew all the steps and everybody else already knew how to do everything and I was there. I didn't even know how to do a proper fifth position, seriously. like. This would be my feet in fifth position, and this is how it's supposed to be. 
like your feet are supposed to be as close together as possible mine were like this like this was my fifth position it was like ridiculous so I mean I did learn a lot from that studio and I wish again I wish I could still dance there but like I just can't afford it but that's like why I stopped dancing it's because it, I number one I just couldn't afford it number two well number one I came from a really crappy dance studio Number two, I just couldn't afford to do classes at the new dance studio anymore. Number three, I just had body image issues, which I'm still dealing with it today. Um, number four, I just kind of learned to live without it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of moved on and, like, I kind of accepted the fact that a professional dance career is just probably not in my future. Um... It's just probably, I just, I just came to terms with the fact that it's just probably not in my cards. And also, I tried to go to school for dance, and that didn't work out either. So that was like a real, that really also beat me down. It just made me feel like maybe this is, maybe this is God's way of telling me this isn't for you. And stuff like that. So I just kind of accepted the fact that maybe dance just isn't what I'm supposed to do. Which is why I do YouTube, because... Entertaining people is what I've always wanted to do. I've known I wanted to do that since I was like 12 years old. And I remember sitting in my room, I would be looking up acting jobs, even though I've never acted before in my life. I'd be looking up acting jobs and like writing down like, you have to ask mom to audition, like you have to find a way to get to New York. Like I knew I wanted to be an entertainer since I was a very young age. And so that's why I do YouTube. Because it's a platform that's free to me. I can do whatever I want. It's like, I can control it. It's all on me. Everything I do is controlled by me. Like, if I want to get big on YouTube, it's on me. Like, I don't need anyone's help to do this. It's just all on me. So that's why I love to do YouTube. And I appreciate all your support. Because um, a few weeks ago, or like a month ago, when I was almost going to lose my channel... That was when I realized that, like, wow, this is all I have. Like, YouTube is all I have to entertain people. Because I don't know if I could get the courage to get back into a studio and try to train again. It's just something that I don't think that I can do. So, YouTube is something that I love to do. And I'm just really happy that you guys are enjoying it. And subscribing and commenting and liking, like... Trust me guys, all your comments really, really help me. And I really love it when you guys just say that you love my videos or you get excited when I post a video. It just means a lot to me. So that was my story about why I stopped dancing and why I don't dance anymore. It was kind of a weird story. I know I kind of got sidetracked. But that was just like kind of the reasons why I don't dance anymore. And I just wanted to do like kind of a story time video because I've never done one before. I'm trying to think of new ideas to do for YouTube videos. So if you guys have any suggestions down below that you guys want to see, please just comment them and I will keep them in mind. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I love you guys all so much.